what were you doing there? And how did it make sense for you to like twist that into this next career career thing? I got to it. All right. So started off my career in the business office. And that's where me and Chris met and uh, managing contracts, reimbursable contracts, construction projects, things like that. Mm. And then I got um, chosen for this leadership development program that NASA holds. It's the top 40 people of, you know, a GS-12 range nice. uh, within the agency. What's GS-12? Yeah, so our GS-12 uh, is a pay level that you get in the federal government. So okay. it's anywhere from a GS-1 to a GS-15. And 15 is like the, the ballers. And then mm. you get into an SES. An SES is like a C-suite uh, mm. individual. So um, What's the president? This, what's the president? <laughs> I don't know. They're on their own uh, executive pay scales, I think. Probably the C-suite one, right? C- CEC well, or SES? So SES, SES is uh, per per agency oh, okay. and it's all each agency might have a different pay scale we just happen to fall on the gs scale gotcha so you were gs12 yeah. you had three more to go before you hit the top exactly gotcha. and it takes a long time to get there man i'm sure 30 40 years right yeah so it's a got thrown into this program because they saw potential in me and pretty much i get assigned a, a leadership coach development coach you go through a whole year of all mm. these uh opportunities get pushed into these uncomfortable situations oh, like what? And like sexual instance, harassment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> That's not okay. Hate to joke. see you go. Love to watch you walk yeah. away. <laughs> oh no, it's getting grosser. <laughs> oh shit. And how yeah. did Dolder have nothing to do with this? <laughs> yeah. I think that uh, everything's so been types of things. That. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, go ahead, Billy. I'm sorry. No, in other words, so they. they Pretty much you'll find out. You take these assessments up front, you know, like a, a Myers-Briggs assessment, you know, if you're introvert, extrovert type thing. Yep. You take a, a conflict dynamics type assessment. So they really just understand you as a human being. And then they'll identify the types of things that hold you back. For me, it was extreme social anxiety. Um, I had tons of creativity, a lot of things within me, but I would have never put them out into the world. Wow. Because of fears, insecurities, whatever it might be. Wow. And so what, is, what does that mean? Oh, Billy, you got to go dance in front of people. Oh, oh Billy, what, is that, what does that, what does that mean? You got to go talk in front of everybody. Um, and when I, that was the myself, extreme social anxiety, uh, 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 medicine, right? Sure. And I, let me just say that I'm um, a great dancer. No, I'm just yeah, <laughs> Billy is a good dancer. I actually was. Yeah. So that's the thing. I actually love dancing, but and then oh, I get so out you must have been like, what the hell are you all talking about? Let me show you something. Put some music. Yeah, back. Exactly. yeah. exactly. I play, play the shy card. Then I'm out there like doing the worm and stuff like that. Whatever. <laughs> but, um, I'll, I'll, I say that very just quickly, like, Hey, you got to go talk in front of people. It, it was more than that because what it is, there's a whole process and development that goes into having the capacity to even jump into a scary situation or what used to be a scary situation to me. Mm. And there is a whole environment that supported people in taking risks because we knew all of us 40 people were there to support each other going through our own stuff because everybody in the world is going through their own stuff. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we're just in our own brains Alone. only caring about ourselves. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Versus trying to help each other out. Ooh. And when you get into an environment like that, it's it's hands down the most impactful experience that anybody could have. So once that ended, you know, so that's three years into my career and the, I go through this program, changes my life. I said, I want to make sure that more than 40 people get this type of opportunity mm. in their life. And so I just started putting out um, like leadership sessions on my own at Kennedy Space Center where, where I was at. Uh, nobody asked me to do it. I just started doing it because anything that I was learning, I would then give it back to, you know, the people around me. Mm. And pretty much it just started taking off to where. More people started coming to my sessions. More people started hearing about it. Started creating these agency-wide initiatives and engagement events. And sounds then all like of a sudden, you, Chris, sounds like you left a couple of years too early, my man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> this, is, this is getting worse and worse for Side. you, dude. Side. Yeah, that's great, what's, Billy. What a, here's, what here's a freaking story, plays, huh? Here's where Chris plays a part, though, because he was during like during this whole opportunity and and, and everything. He was there, mm. and. Chris is a, a polar opposite of me. So here I am. I'm five foot nothing. I'm a Chris Nazi. He's something. a communist. <laughs> We're complete, like, it, it's completely different. But I saw there's a lot of things in me that Chris would just do naturally. Mm. And I was too scared to do them. Mm. And being around him allowed me to even like, take that chance really to be part of that as well. Breaks. <laughs> Say it again. Really long bathroom breaks. <laughs> yeah. 
But we're basically, what I'm, what I'm gathering here is whatever shittiness there is inside of Billy, it was actually your fault, Chris. Mm. And, and Without he was, question. And he, was, he, he went to that one-year program to just basically get all the Chris, detox yeah, Chris Brown. Yeah, he just uh, <laughs> shook it all off. Yeah. <laughs> what a program, dude. And what a, what a guy for doing all this stuff. So you had people like starting to knock on your door for some of this stuff, huh? Yeah, and, that, and that's when like I just started doing a lot of stuff on, on my own, doing some coaching, stuff like that. And then that creates an opportunity for a lot more people, a lot of other government agencies, but then private sectors to say, hey, look, this guy, Billy's actually doing some great things and we want to have you. And so mm. that's what happened now. I'm, I'm with uh, Accenture, a great, <laughs> great 500,000 person global yeah, organization that's, that's changing the world and um, couldn't be happier. Mm. So, I mean, what I understood you as kind of a, 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 a quote unquote integral coach. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't quite understand what that means, especially as it pertains to being at a company like Accenture. Does that mean right. you're kind of an on staff coach for executives and whatnot there? T help me understand that. Yeah. So uh, I'll do the NASA to Accenture translation okay. or approach. So at, at NASA, I was leading, I ended up leading the program that I went through. Oh, so no I took shit. over the program that I went through. Created some other programs. Yeah, I'm around. sure that got you into GS13. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely <laughs> stepped it up. I uh, got that GS13. Um, Billy, Billy did as much work as like 10 GS15s. Let's just be get real. The F out of here, really? You think? Yes. So? Holy shit! Like, so I would, So that's the thing. When I was doing all these other programs, I would do my day job, my my business work. I did all automation type things. You know, five hour work week uh, type stuff as much as I could. Uh get it up at 4 a.m., do all my business stuff, and then mm. I would do, during the day, do all my leadership stuff, the stuff that I actually cared about, and then yeah. at night, I would follow up with my business stuff. Mm. And so, it, you know, maybe sleeping, in, I don't know, right, right, four right, hours right. a day, but just working Damn. nonstop so but that I can finally get 100% of my time dedicated to coaching and doing leadership and development at right. NASA, which I did right. uh, so towards the end of my career. Billy actually introduced me to the book that convinced me to leave NASA. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Was it Tim? Tim uh, yeah, it was the four hour work week. Billy, you must have had it or told me about it. And you're like, dude, this book's super dope. And I was like, book reading, that's for dorks. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would just read it on the hour and 10 minute van pool ride to and from work every day. And I got to page 80 and I was like, Billy's right. I'm quitting this job. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, for those who haven't read the book, because I bought the book and I read parts of it. But like, yeah. what's the quick Billy and Chris? What's the quick like for me to get that? What is or better yet? How did you apply that, Billy, to your life? Yeah, good yeah. question. Yeah. So at, at NASA, the type of work I was doing, there was a lot of uh, spreadsheets that I could do, you know, put formulas to versus manually inputting them the way that we were doing originally. So I threw formulas to everything. So everything that took maybe two days for us to do, I was doing it in 15 minutes, mm. you know, and so, so I'm saying that was 10 clearing times up a lot as of much. Space. Ah, yeah. <laughs> times as much um, and then I would just, I would insert a lot of processes into the system with the people I would interact with so that they knew at, at certain times of the week or the month, we were already engaging. I didn't have to go reach for them or look for them. They already knew, Hey, I'm coming, we're talking, we're getting some things solved. And so I would just put a lot of automation into the processes and into life. So that it, it created the extra spare time for me to do the, the things that I loved at NASA still, which so you, is another great thing about NASA. They, they allow you the space and time to do those passion projects mm -hmm. as long as you get your work done. So you're saying a lot of the four hour work week, Tim Ferriss philosophy is around, uh, you know, squeezing your brain to figure out how to automate and reduce effort but still get the job, you know, done hundred percent accurately. Is that what a lot of his philosophy is? And is that what you applied? Yeah. Automation, better process uh, so that you can spend more time doing the things either that you love or that produce more value mm. to yourself and to others versus the, the mundane, like AI and stuff is taking over all the stuff that we used to do. Mm. Like half, half of the workforce in the world that I used to live in at NASA could be, you know, wiped out within a year and that will have to be reskilled to do other things because, AI technology advances will be able to do all that type of thing. No, do you really believe that? I do. I know from experience that he speaks the truth. Within a year, Billy, do you really mean that? I mean, people are doing it now. Like, for instance, we uh, so a procurement process to to buy something in a federal government 
you you need um, a lot of different documents, paperwork. The the contractor themselves need to be on a certain uh, system and approved by the government, etc. And oftentimes it takes at least five people to approve things, check the box before it gets signed off and bought. Yeah, that well, shit sounds so annoying. We used to have it at J.P. Morgan exactly. too. All that shit. All these other companies and things, they're using Alexa, like Alexa dots, to just say, um, hey, Alexa, buy me those 500 rolls of toilet paper or whatever it might be that I need. And it does it all, all automatically. It comes up with their final spreadsheet or their, their final sign off document. All things are checked. The approvers are already there and you're good to go. So something that would take a day back in the day is taking maybe 10 minutes, five minutes. That's one example. One example. Hmm. Okay. I got you. Shit starts becoming much more efficient. Yeah. Because of AI. Yeah, I get that. But I mean, you, the, the term you said was a lot of, uh, uh, I thought, what I understood was like a, a bunch of human beings are about to become obsolete at NASA, for example. Okay. Is, so that, is, that, what you, is that what you were suggesting? And here's the, here's the thing is, uh, I don't believe humans will ever be obsolete. I think that they're going to be uh, reskilled and redirected into things that will they'll be able to provide more value. So instead of wasting time pushing buttons and putting in man- manual you know numbers into spreadsheets, they're going to be able to have conversations, creative collaborations, or you know thought provoking things that's going to then advance us even farther. Right. Because right. that's what we're great at doing. That whole curiosity thing that yeah. you said before. That's it's going to free up the time to get out of the the bean counting and into yep. the whole space of creating the future. Full agreement. I, I agree with that. But I mean, I, what I understood from you was that like in the next year, a lot of people who are at, for example, NASA, who are doing their gig, aren't going to necessarily be there doing that gig because AI is moving so quickly. Is that Correct. what you were suggesting? If, if, if NASA says yes, we want to invest in this, which they have plenty of opportunities to invest in that. Once they say yes. That is true. Wow. And okay. the thing is, they will just be reskilled. It's going to be a great opportunity for people to learn something new, do something completely different. Wow. I got you. I got you. Wow. It's got my brain, my brain turning about how I can use AI more in my life and in my business, but also um, how I can automate and improve processes more in my life and in my business per Tim Ferriss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> per Tim Ferriss, yeah. So, so all right. So you, 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 you took over that program and then yeah. – and then, uh, somehow yeah. that that catapults you into moving towards Accenture somehow, right? Right. And so pretty much at, at Accenture, I'm doing the same thing where I am a certified coach. I can coach people one on one to help support them in getting out of whatever they're stuck in in life. And then I also design, facilitate and lead development sessions. I love facilitating. I love getting people out of their box, out of their comfort zones and doing new things. Um, I love designing programs so that people feel, you know, supportive, comfort, comfortable doing crazy things that are outside of their com- comfort zone. But having those one-on-one coaching sessions is one of the, the things I do like doing as well. Do, do you, do you do this stuff personally? Like if I was to call you up, uh, after the session be like, yo, Billy, can we do one-on-one stuff? Are you too busy? For, for sure. That? Yeah, for sure. No, I, I do that. I do that now. So that, there's no problem. You do do that right now. Okay. So you yeah, do yeah. personal stuff as well. Yeah. I mean, sometimes life coaching and coaching in general gets a, gets a knock, you know, uh, sure. uh, I hear people say, what do I hear? Like glorified, uh, uh, I forget, you know, there's some really people rip on life coaches. Sometimes I'm like, damn, you know? Uh, uh, but I mean, like, what's your take on that? You know, I mean, Uh, are are there life coaches out there who you think are BS and they aren't really helping (laughs) someone or, or do you feel like they're all really well trained and, and, and you recommend everyone to have a life coach? Sure. I, I think, I think it's like any other service that you could go out there and, and have in the world. You're gonna get some great experiences, like I heard you say before. You're in the you're on the restaurant business, you're in the experience uh, business or yep, whatnot. Yep. You can get different experiences wherever you True. go. So you're gonna get very, you know, whoever you go with, it's it's fine. But um, my belief truly is that a life coach should not be telling you what to do, or like a a development coach is, should not be telling you what to do. Most people, some people go into wanting to be a coach because they like telling people what to do. Mm. That's not what it is. <laughs> Dangerous. The belief is that so integral, inter, integral coaching is about looking at the person as a whole. So the physical well-being, the, the somatic responses they have, um, their emotional state of mind, their perspectives and interpretations of the world. So that then we can support you, the human being, in unlocking what is you know the potential for you. So it's an unfolding. Mm. So think of either a, a flower that's ever blooming and con- constantly unfolding of mm. what is possible for you. Mm. That's what my job is to do: is really help um, 
help unfold what is possible for you because you have all the resources you have already, meaning you have what it takes inside of you to do whatever it is you want to do. There's just other stuff that's getting in the way that has been created either from your upbringing, from society, from just, you know, interpretations and stories we're telling ourselves. Right. And we're just there to support you and asking the questions and, you know, having having people look at things a little differently and uh, create a body to actually do the things they want to do. Right, right, right. Okay, I get that. I like that too. And I, I do, I do, I visit with a therapist, uh, and he he sometimes asks those type of questions, um, mm-hmm. and they they'll go back into you know childhood and all that other stuff, and it helps me sometimes. Mm-hmm. I really get, I really get to see, uh, yeah. man, why this is why I'm behaving this way, and so I feel more. What's the word? I have more knowledge about myself. Yeah, it's self awareness, man. Yeah, it's really self awareness. That's the number one thing. But then it, one nice consequence of that is I feel a little bit more self assured. You know, like, I don't know if it's confidence, if that's the best word, but like, I'm, I now more know more like my blind spots and weak spots and all the shit, yep. you know, weakness. And so I feel a little bit more like, okay, I kind of know Amr and I know what, you know, in what ways he's messed up and I can, I can live with that. I can, I can live yeah. with him. You know, I accept, mm-hmm. I accept me more, a little more, you know? So yeah, I, I get that. And so a life coach, uh, in that way, uh, keeps a person moving forward, focusing more on their goals. I don't think my therapist really focuses on my goals too much, to be honest with you. I think they're more focused on me, like mm. I, I'm me healing and self-assured and that kind mm. of thing. Right. Yeah. And uh, you asked, Hey, should everybody have one? I believe. Yeah. You know, before, uh, especially in the South, it's, it's different. So I was trained in San Francisco. Uh, everybody in my course seemed to have two therapists and a coach down Man. the South. It's like, if you're going to see somebody, something's wrong with you. 